Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join me today as we have another amazing tutorial in Silhouette Studio. Now, if you enjoy learning more about Silhouette Studio, definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you're always notified of our latest and greatest videos. But today guys, we are making our very own 20 ounce sublimation tumbler design. All right guys, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. You know, it is my favorite software for sublimation and for designing. So this works out really well for today's video tutorial, okay? Because what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to create your own sublimation tumbler design. And what I mean by that is we're gonna take uh, three different elements and combine them to make one finished product that we're then going to, in a follow-up video, sublimate on a really awesome glass tumbler. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I think it's a good introduction to designing. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and bring in the elements that we're going to work with. So we can go to file and merge, and that will bring them into our existing a designing area here. So the first thing that I'm going to bring in is the pattern background that I want to use, and it's this spider web image here. Now, I also want to say that in Silhouette Studio, I have the auto trace feature turned on. It should be defaulted to be turned on, but just in case you can find that down here in your additional settings or preferences, it is under the import feature. But I tell you that because you're going to see that my clip art imports with no background. So just in case yours looks a little different than mine, that may be why and why you want to check that out. But see on this image here, how I have the red cut lines. What that means is that Silhouette Studio has already auto traced this and deleted the background, okay? So what that means is I'm actually going to change that outline to black. Um, I can actually change it to transparent, but because I'm making this a little thinner, then I actually want to thicken up these lines a little bit and creating a black line is going to do that for me too. So let's go ahead and it's a rather large design. You may see that when you're working with large design elements that your software lags a little bit. So if that happens, don't worry about it. Just know that... Um, you know, it is easily something that you just got to be patient and let it work through um, its own struggles there. But there we go. So what we want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and lock my aspect ratio and I'm going to size it down. Now your typical 20 ounce skinny tumbler is going to be 8.2 by 9.3. So we'll just go ahead and because this is a square image, we'll just make it 9.3. And we're going to let that sizing take place. And then we're going to use our center to page feature. Now this design is assuming that you have a straight tumbler. Sometimes these skinny tumblers can be a little bit tapered in which you would want to actually find an exact template. But for a straight skinny 20 ounce tumbler, then these measurements should work. So I just want to show you the difference. If I change it to a transparent line, it will still be a nice little spider web. And if that's what you want, that's fine. I just know that I want mine a little bit darker. So I'm going to thicken it up and then I'm actually going to change my line thickness to 0.5. That way it'll be thick, but not as thick as what you're seeing in the initial preview. There we go. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is I'm just going to go ahead and create my template by drawing a rectangle. And so on my rectangle, I'm going to unlock my aspect ratio and type in those measurements that we talked about. So I want it to be 8.2 inches tall and 9.3 inches wide. There we go. Now I'm going to center that to page also, because what I'm going to do is grab both of these. I'm going to open my modify panel and choose crop. And that's going to size that spider rub design down to exactly fit the size of that template. It just makes it easier when you know the exact size that you're working with. That way you're not trying to trim this down later down the road. Now, once that's done, you can just go ahead and group it together. Because sometimes when you crop, some of these outlying pieces will go ahead and separate out. So now let's go ahead and bring in the main design that we're going to put on this tumbler. Now that we have the background, I'm going to use this Halloween design, of course, because I have a spider web background. 
And again, do you see the red cut lines around the outside? That's just where that auto uh, trace feature kicks in. So I'm going to change those to transparent. And I have already measured my tumbler and I know that the maximum size width wise that I want this design is gonna be four inches. So I'm just going to lock my aspect ratio and change that to four inches. And once again, center to page. Now you can actually print it just like this and it would be fine, but I like to have a little separation from my background. So the next thing I'm going to bring in is a bleach effect. Now you're not going to get the full bleach effect in this type of design because I'm putting a white design onto a white, uh, basically a white background. So all you're going to see is a little bit of separation around the design where the spider webs interact but there we go that is our our bleach effect you can see the red outlines there so let's go ahead and once again change that to transparent and what I'm going to do because obviously the size of my bleach effect is going to need to be a little larger because it accounts for all these little outlying pieces so let's start with five inches and once again we will center to page and you can see how that doesn't quite cover up my entire design. So what I'm going to do is just make it a little larger. And I want it to at least mostly cover up the design that we're working with. So I'm going to drag it into place. And then we're going to use our send backwards. And you see what I mean? Like you can't really see all the definition around the bleach design. It's just going to give us that, you know, instead of just a white circle, it's going to give us a white element behind our design so that it pops more. Okay, so did that make sense? You see what I'm talking about with the design? It's just a little bit more definition than what you would get having all of the spider web design out there. Okay, but I really like the bleach effect because it's not a stark circle or a stark border around our design. Is very good, especially for a Halloween design, but bleach effects just really come in handy anytime you're dealing with these types of, you know, I keep saying design. I'm using the word design a lot, but these types of designs. So let's go ahead and group this whole thing together. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip horizontally because I want it to be mirrored. Now remember, you're either going to mirror in the software or you're going to mirror on the printer. Either is fine. And actually, I'm just kidding. Let me go ahead and I'm going to ungroup that again. Yeah, I know we just grouped it, but I'm going to ungroup it because I actually want that design to be a little bit more towards the top. That way it's not directly in the center of our tumbler. I don't know why that matters. It may not matter to you, but it just matters a little bit to me. So what I can do is just move and I'm just using the directional arrows on my keyboard. I'm just going to bump that down. So now let's go ahead and just regroup it. So now let's go ahead and talk about printing our design. We're going to go to our page setup panel. And even though my machine and matter set to none, I want to change my media because I am printing this on a letter size printer. I'm also going to turn on my show print border. And in my transform panel, I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I'm going to center to page. Now for me, this template and this size fits perfectly around the tumblers that I'm working with, but always just make sure to check your tumbler because I have found a few tumblers, just depending on where I get the tumblers at, I found a few tumblers that seem to be just a little taller and then I have to adjust my design. Okay. But now you have a completely finished sublimation tumbler design that is ready to print and sublimate on your tumbler. So make sure you check out our follow-up video to see just how we do that in case you have not sublimated on these glass tumblers before. I think they're really great and I'm pretty sure that you will too. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. So guys, how did you feel about setting up our very own 20 ounce skinny tumbler sublimation design? Now, I know that we combined a few elements that were pre-made, but guys, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you're so inspired in time, you will learn to create your own elements and truly start creating designs from scratch. But we all start somewhere. So hopefully you learned a few new things in the video.
Now, if you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. I love to hear from you guys. I love to help you any way I can. And make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, maybe share with a crafty friend. That way we can keep growing the channel to keep bringing you these really awesome videos. But guys, I am going to wrap it up for today. Just a little plug. Make sure you check out our follow-up tutorial on sublimating these glass tumblers. But guys, I appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you again next time.